Josiah Gray has been pretty awesome, but let's take a peek under the hood next on Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. Welcome into FBT and 5. As always, make sure to follow and stream us on Spotify. Today is Thursday, August 19th. I am Frank Stanfield, joined by Scott White. And let's evaluate Josiah Gray, who's now with the Washington Nationals. On Wednesday, he made a start against the Toronto Blue Jays. Six innings, two runs, four strikeouts. He's made four starts with Washington, a 2.86 ERA. The strikeouts are there, but he's also allowed seven home runs, and he's got a 60% fly ball rate. Scott, where are you at on Josiah Gray? That fly ball rate is concerning. 60% is very high and 50% is high. So 60% is, you know, that, that seems like it's going to get you in trouble with home runs, but the swinging strike rate has been so high itself. Like it league leader type territory and swinging strikes. And, And if I'm, if I'm prioritizing what, uh, what what, what skills I, I value most in a pitcher swinging strikes would probably be number one. Number two would probably be fly balls versus ground balls. So, you know, kind of a mixed bag for Josiah Gray, but ultimately I'm more di- encouraged than discouraged with what we've seen from him so far. And I, I'd pick him up anywhere. He was still available. 74% rostered on CBS is Josiah Gray. Looks like he's in line for two starts next week. The matchups don't get much better than this at the Miami Marlins and at the New York Mets. Scott, what should that roster rate look like? by next week's time for Josiah Gray. I mean, as aggressively as people go after two-star pitchers, it's likely he'll be up over 80%. What is he now? 74%. Yeah, easily over 80%, maybe even over 85 All right, yeah, I think that makes sense. Let's play waiver wire matchmaker. Miguel Sano hit a 475-foot home run on Wednesday, and in the second half, he's betting 262, five homers, in 877 OPS, 54% rostered. He's got first and third base eligibility. Six games next week. Three of those against lefties. Any interest, Scott, in Miguel Sano? If you're chasing home runs, uh, he still has the profile of an elite slugger in terms of exit velocity, hard hit rate, launch angle. Uh, he could do a lot of damage in a short period of time, but I'm not. Necess- you can't really count on him doing that over any stretch of time. So it's 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 a very specialized player. Matchmaker, would you drop Eric Hosmer for Miguel Sano? Mm, I guess so. Yeah, I mean, you're not missing much with Hosmer. Would you drop Dominic Smith? Yeah. Would you drop a Eugenio Suarez? Oh, yeah. He's not even playing every day. Yep. All three of those players are rostered in over 60% of CBS League, so you can make that swap if Miguel Sano is available. Tyler McGill was at the Giants on Wednesday. Six innings, one run, six strikeouts, 16 swinging strikes on 90 pitches. He's got a 3.21 ERA, and looks like he is in line for two starts next week against the Giants. And the Nationals, he's 63% rostered. Your interest level in Tyler McGill? Well, his previous three starts weren't great, and I was starting to cool off on him after after really liking him when he first got called up. But this start on Wednesday, it was arguably his best one yet. The 16 swinging strikes were were certainly the most he's had in a game so far. And, I mean, if you just just break down his overall numbers since the time he got called up, they they still look pretty good. So for a two-start week, even though that Giants matchup is a tough one, uh, I would say Tyler McGill needs to be started in most leagues. Would you drop Dallas Keuchel for him? Yes, I would. Would you drop Casey Mize? Yes, I would. All right. Waiver wire matchmaker. This is working out perfectly. Miles Straw on Wednesday went one for four with a double RBI, two walks, two runs scored, and his 21st steal of the season. We know at this point what you're going to get. A lot of steals, some runs scored, an okay batting average from Miles Straw. Scott, would you drop someone like Lourdes Gurriel for Miles Straw if you needed steals in a category league? I think Miles Straw only matters in categories leagues and only really only like five by five leagues, traditional five by five leagues, because you get more categories than that. It obviously dilutes the value of steals. So understanding that, I think I probably would drop him for Gurriel in, in that format just because Gurriel's playing time has been so diminished of late. All right. Let's quickly wrap up with uh, two of the best players in baseball right now. Shohei Otani becomes the first player to hit 40 home runs this season. He also has a 2.79 ERA, 106 whip. On Wednesday, eight innings, one run, eight strikeouts against the Tigers. He is just phenomenal. There are not enough words to describe Shohei Otani. And then Freddie Freeman, 
hit for the second cycle of his career. He's now batting 301 with 27 home runs. Scott, there's not much analysis to add, but these guys are awesome. They are they are awesome. Yes, I think Shohei Otani Tani is easily the AL MVP, even if you exclude his pitching stats. You know, he has a case for it. And, and as you pointed out, he's been an amazing pitcher, amazing pitcher. They're, they're an, an ace level pitcher, even if the, his starts have been further spaced apart. Uh, and then Freddie Freeman, you know, people were kind of worried when he was batting around. It was batting under 240 the first two months, but he's just exploded since then and looked at, as good as he's ever looked. This is actually the third most home runs he already has uh, this season with plenty of time still to go. For more extensive fantasy baseball coverage, listen to the Fantasy Baseball Today podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, your smart speakers, or anywhere else podcasts are found. And thanks for listening to Fantasy Baseball Today in 5. If you enjoyed the pod, please leave a five-star review on Apple. We'll be back again tomorrow morning. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. 